What's up students? Welcome back to class. It's PGT Sensei. We're back in the still air box again. Today's class we're going to be going over spore swaps to agar. So let me show you how easy it is to work with spore swaps here. First let me go over spore swaps. It's a swab that contains spores on it. You want to know how easy it is to make a spore swap? You just take a sterile cotton swab and rub the gills of a mushroom to collect the mushroom spores. Or you take a spore print and rub the cotton swab on there. You basically just rub spores onto the swab. It's just that simple. And in order to germinate the spores, you just rub those spores onto agar. Continue the process. So let's get started here. I'll go ahead and prepare my spore swab. I went ahead and opened up the lids to my agar cups here to make it easier to work with. And uh, we'll pull out our spore swab. And what you want to do is swab the agar with the spore swab. I like doing this little zigzag pattern while twisting the spore swab to get all angles of the swab to make contact with the agar. This will ensure the highest chance that spores are transferring to the agar from the spore swab. So I'll go ahead and repeat this process for a few of my cups here. This will ensure that in case one of them doesn't germinate, at least one or two others probably will. Now you're not going to be able to see much happening right here because spores are microscopic, but as long as there are spores on your swab and you're doing it correctly, you will be transferring spores onto the agar. For my last cup, I'll go ahead and just snip off the tip of the spore swab and just drop that directly onto the agar. It's kind of just like a last defense in case none of the other dishes decide to germinate. This last one would definitely germinate if the others fail. After you're done inoculating your agar dishes, we'll go ahead and leave these out to incubate at room temperature so you want to be somewhere between 70 to 80 degrees fahrenheit or 21 to 28 degrees celsius we'll check back to these in about a week or two and you should see some mycelium start to germinate from our spores one week later all right after about seven days here this is what you might see from your agar dishes you can see little mycelium start to germinate in our cups what we didn't see there before is now showing up pretty clearly, as you can see. Now, a lot of these tend to end up looking very spotty and fluffy. This is very typical of going uh, directly from spores to agar. You're getting a lot of different genetics starting to germinate, so you're not going to get those pretty rhizomorphic mycelium unless you start making a few transfers from these. So once you get them growing, Pretty much a good sign that you got some mycelium on there that's colonizing. You want to start making transfers out of these and uh, transfer them to new agar cups to colonize. Now these look pretty clean so far. However, sometimes you might get some contamination or bacteria that might be underlying and hasn't germinated yet. So it's always a good practice to make transfers and clean up your cultures on new agar dishes before you inoculate them into grain. And here's the final cup that we snipped the spore swab and dropped it into the agar cup. Unfortunately, this is starting to grow contamination in here. I believe this is uh, pin mode. Now it looks sort of like cobweb, but it's not quite. You see a lot of small little dots in here. Those are very indicative traits of pin mode. But in here, you can also see mycelium is also starting to germinate as well. Unfortunately, I've let this cup gone a little bit too far and the pin mold's taken over a majority of the real estate inside of this dish. So it's gonna be very difficult to try and clean up this uh, from the contamination. But I figured it'd be very neat to show you guys what uh, contaminations would look like when you're germinating from spores. I always assume that spores are gonna be dirty when you're working with them. Here, I'm going to open this up and give you guys a closer look at the uh, the abomination here. If I can get the camera to focus here. Come on, there we go. Now, most times when you get contamination, you don't want to really open them up. You really just want to throw them away. Because as you're opening them up, you're risking uh, the spread of the mold spores from getting into the air and getting into the space surrounding you. I have a pretty clean surface table here that I'm going to clean up afterwards. So I'm pretty much doing this just for the camera, just to be able to give you guys a good view of these. Uh, pretty much sacrificing my table here for your entertainment. So 
it's, well, if you decide to do the same thing I'm doing, you're doing it at your own risk. In this next example, I'll show you guys how you can use a print to create a swab and germinate it out. Now, I love doing this method because it's going to allow you to stretch a print for many, many grows. You can probably get about 100 use out of a single spore print by doing this method. Now, start off with your sterile cotton swab. I like to use these cotton tip wood applicators. They come pre-sterilized already. You can buy a pack of these on Amazon for pretty cheap. I'll have links in the description below on where you can get them. Now, if you don't want to buy these, you want to make your own, you certainly can. Just get some wooden Q-tips and wrap them up in some aluminum foil and pressure cook them along with your agar or whatever uh, to sterilize them. It'll be the same method. I just find these to be very convenient and ready to use. And then you want to go ahead and just take your swab and get a little bit of your sample of the spores onto there. Here, I'll go ahead and put it directly on top of the spores and just rub them around until you get some spores onto the swab. And once you get a, a decent amount, you don't need a whole lot. Just a tiny bit of amount there, just so that you know that they're on the swabs. And that's pretty much it. They're your spore swabs ready to use. And then you can just seal up your print and save them to use for another day whenever you decide to come back to them. So same process applies here. We'll take our spore swab and we'll go ahead and rub them across the surface of the agar dish here. As you can see some spores are already transferring onto this dish. Uh, but then again spores are microscopic so even if you don't see them transfer onto the dish they probably are. So just have faith that spores are on there and give it some time and you'll get some germination. Sometimes my agar cups have some moisture on them. This is from condensation. They're still really good to use anyway. So I'm not going to waste the cup. I'm going to use it up anyway. Anyhow, the process is going to be the same as before. Go ahead and spread these across our dishes and uh, I'll speed up the videos and I'll see you guys in a little bit here and I'll show you guys the results. One week later. All right, here we are, seven days later. This is the beginning of our spores germinating from the same swabs that you've seen here. As you can see, we have some mycelium's starting to spread out here. At this point, it's still a bit early. I like to leave these out to germinate a bit longer before I start making transfers out of these. Typically, I'll wait about two weeks in order to decide what to do with them. Here's one of the cups that hasn't quite germinated fully yet. You can see a little bit of spores there that's starting to germinate, but hasn't quite developed any strong mycelium in there just yet. But you leave this out for another week and I'm pretty sure you'll start seeing uh, mycelium fuzz all over in there. So much 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 later so i've left the dishes out for a bit longer here it is on day 22 after inoculation the spores have germinated fully and mycelium has pretty much covered the entire top of our agar dish at this point you can start making transfers out of these onto new dishes let them colonize make sure you have a clean culture and once they're ready to go you can inoculate them to your grains so that's pretty much it for spore swabs.
big shout out to my Patreon subscribers here for this month. Without you guys, I would not be able to continue doing what I do and what I love. So, thank you very much for the support, guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. Leave comments below and subscribe for more videos. If you want to discuss and learn more about mushrooms and mycology, come join us over on the Discord server. And if you want to show some support by becoming a golden student, you can check out my Patreon. All links will be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video.